Hello there friends, this is Joel Humphreys. <coughs> I want to speak to you to a briefly a short message from the Bible concerning the fact that we need to be filled and flowing. Filled and flowing. We need to be filled and flow. And when I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts, then we need to be filled and flow with the Holy Spirit. This is important because God's Word teaches that we have within us the Spirit of God when we become Christians. You that believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord, you're redeemed by the blood and you're saved by grace. And you have within you the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. And He wants all of you. So you need to give Him all that you have and trust Him as best that you can that He's there with you. He knows where you are. He knows what's going on. He wants to help you get through it. And hallelujah, He'll do it. The Bible says in John the seventh chapter, Jesus stood and cried and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spake of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, If you believe in me, trust in me as the Lord and Savior of your life. Ask me to come into your heart and your life and confess your sins to me and say, Forgive me and I will forgive your sins and you will be born again and you'll belong to God forever and you'll never be lost. You'll be His forever because He dwells in you to the power of the Holy Spirit. And He said it'll be like rivers of living water flowing in you out of your belly, out of the innermost part of your being flows the river, flows the river, not just from your mind. Now the Holy Spirit will give you thoughts to the mind but the source is down here and the inner person down here in the spirit, down here in, in the very innermost parts of your body. The King James verse says belly, that's a pretty good name for it. Out of your very belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let that water flow in your life today as best you can. And you learn to do that by prayer, by reading the word and denying self. Prayer, reading the word and denying self and trusting God. Oh, praise the Lord. You need to be forgiven of every sin. Or oh, when Psalms 51, the Bible says, Wash me thoroughly, O Lord, for my iniquity, and, and to cleanse me from all my sin. Oh, wash me thoroughly for my iniquity, and cleanse me, the psalmist cried. And then he said again, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And so we need to know that God forgives us. And we need to ask Him for mercy and forgiveness and ask Him to come in our hearts and to live for Him and we'll be saved forever. God bless you. Oh, the Lord is your strength. Matthew 7 and verse 12, it says, Whatsoever things you would that, that men do to you, do you even so to them likewise. This is the law and the prophets. In other words, Jesus is saying the Bible truth is that you should do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Would you have someone like you, then you like others. Would you have someone forgive you when you've done wrong to them, then forgive others. Would you have someone love you and care for you, then love others and care for others. All oh, praise the Lord. In other words, give to others as you feel like they should give to you. Now if they don't do it to you, you do your part and still do what you would have them to do to you as best you can. And God will bless you and you need the Holy Spirit to do this. Over in John, the first chapter, it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so the Lord forgives us and cleanses us. I've had to pray today, Lord, forgive me. I let self get too much in me and I'm too concerned about me more than Him. And so I must pray, God, forgive me. And I know he has. You see, when God's people sin and do wrong, and we always are, uh, are in that category sooner or later, we all miss it. We all find fault, find fault with others, but we shouldn't because the fault is often with us. And so it says, if, if any man say we have not sinned, the truth is not in him. He's talking to Christians here. We have to recognize that even as children of God, we still miss it. But God forgives we confess it and we're cleansed from all unrighteousness and filled with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit will give us utterance and we'll know what to say. Over in 1 Corinthians 
in the uh, in the fifth chapter of First Corinthians, it says the natural man does not receive the things of God because he to them it is foolishness, but because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. And so you see, you have to have the Holy Spirit reveal to you the things of God. Until then, they're foolishness to you. But when He reveals the truth and Christ comes into your life, then you become a child of God. And you walk with the Lord and you know His way is right. And you are always and always shall be a child of God. The Bible says that he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Now the spiritual person that's been saved, he judges all things. He makes decisions that are made by the Holy Spirit in him. The Holy God will help him to make the right decisions and judge things that he should judge. But he himself is not judged of any man. You're not judged by men, my dear friend. If you're a child of God, you'll only be judged by God. And he's the one that judges. And so may the hand of the Lord be upon you. I'm a preacher. But I'm not ju I, I'm, a man cannot judge me. Only God can judge me. I must seek to please Him. And if I please Him, then God is pleased to please others. May the Lord bless you. May you find His way is right and walk in it. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God. Amen and amen. And we find these truths are written in the Word of God. Over here in Matthew, the 7th chapter, and verse 9, Jesus said, What man is there of you? If his son shall ask him for a piece of bread, would he give him a stone? All right, if you know, if being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father give to have to them good things to them that ask him? And so he says, Now if a son shall ask his father for a piece of bread, he's hungry. Would the father give him a stone? No. But he said, How much more shall your heavenly father give good things to those that ask him? But here's something I want you to notice in this scripture. The child is a good child, apparently, and he's asking for something good. He's hungry, and so he's asking for a piece of bread. And the father gives him that piece of bread. And so we must be asking for the right thing as far as we can know. He didn't ask him for a pistol to go out and shoot somebody. He didn't ask him for a jug of a wine to go out and get drunk. He didn't ask for something that, that was wrong. He asked for a piece of bread because he was hungry. We must learn what to ask for. We must learn to pray in the purpose of God. And when you pray in the purpose, you'll find the power. And you'll go on to live because God is with you. He's going to give you the strength to find and follow Him. You'll hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. And you'll find that way. Right now you're looking for a decision in your life. Look to Him and say, Lord, help me. Make the right decision. Help me see the way. Help me walk in it because you are my strength. You are my light, my life. You are my hope. May God bless you. If you've never really prayed and asked Jesus in your heart, as I close, I pray that you'll pray this brief prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I do believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me upon the cross at Calvary. I believe He paid for all my sins. I believe He's coming back again. I believe He rose. Hallelujah. I'm asking you to come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Amen. Pray a prayer like that, and you'll know the power of the living water flowing in you, the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> that will help you to live for God and help you pray and help you read the Bible and understand it and help you to please God and enjoy your life because God is with you. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen.